So how do you actually get exposure into e-commerce? Look, there's a lot of ways for you to actually sell things online. You can sell on marketplaces, you can buy inventory, you can do drop shipping, you can do Shopify stores. There's a lot of different ways and most people get confused on what is the best way for them to do it. And so in this video, I wanna break down exactly how you can get exposure to e-commerce and the different ways that you can sell. So I'm gonna show you on my iPad here the different ways that most people actually sell because it's a very convoluted space. There's a lot of ways that you can transact. So let's go ahead and grab a pen and paper, take some notes, and let's get into it. So let's first start with your high school diploma. Now the equivalent in the e-commerce space to having a high school diploma is your online arbitrage type business models, basically in which that you find a product on one platform and you sell it for a higher price on another platform. Simple business model, but what this really allows you to do is find products that are winning, okay? And this allows you to start seeing trends and understanding what people are actually buying without having to either spend money on ads or having to pay for the inventory up front. And we'll talk about that in a second, okay? Online arbitrage is very, very simple because it's between websites. You may have seen another side hustle, retail arbitrage, where I actually go into Marshalls or I go into some sort of a store that actually has the product and then I sell that online and flip it. Now, again, this model, if you're gonna do the arbitrage model anyways, I would just recommend doing the online way because it's way more scalable. You don't have to drive everywhere. You don't have to buy a bunch of products. Maybe when you find a product online that's working really well, you can find it in local retailers near you to do that, okay? Now, winning products, typically no inventory and no ads. Okay, really, really straight up, really, really simple. So the next piece is your associate's degree, right? Let's talk about that. This is typically where people are doing FBA or some sort of FBM model. If you guys don't know, FBA stands for fulfilled by Amazon and FBM stands for fulfilled by merchant, meaning that you buy product and you send it to Amazon's warehouse or you send it to another warehouse. If it's in Amazon's case, that means that they're gonna take care of all the shipping for you and Amazon as a platform already has all the traffic on that platform so you don't need to run any ads or anything like that. Now you can still list on Amazon and do an FBM approach, but then you would either connect a different warehouse or a different supplier to the actual transaction that way that they send it out. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper in the beginning, uh, but typically when people do FBA, they just send everything to Amazon and it's all a one-stop shop. Okay, so what you're learning here is typically logistics and inventory. Okay, and all of these start to stack on each other. Okay, so you have your FBA, your FBM, and then next is typically your bachelor's degree. Now, this is where people like to go to Shopify. Okay, and they can typically do Shopify drop shipping to start. And the reason that you have to go through this ascension model typically is because now that you've already identified winning products and you understand how logistics works and what's needed and at what levels you need to buy inventory at, then people typically start to learn web. This is analytics, this is traffic, this is ads typically, this is content, this is email, SMS. You know, they start to really dive deeper into the data and then make data back decisions and it gets really, really deep or they actually start paying an agency to do all of this kind of stuff for them and if you don't know what you don't know, based off your products or logistics or any of that kind of stuff, they can actually either help the business by offloading that if you don't know what it is, or if you don't know how to run marketing and stuff like that, they can really have a run on you for your money. So you gotta be careful when you're working with agencies and stuff. Now that's the thing with Shopify is that you're responsible for bringing the traffic to you. So you can have the most beautiful website ever, but if you don't actually bring customers and bring people to it, it ain't gonna do anything for you, okay? So that's where we actually get into more of your master's degree. And with your master's degree, not only are you responsible for all the things that we talked about prior, but you're typically doing private label. Okay, so maybe you developed the product, maybe you didn't, but let's say you didn't develop the product because most of the things that are out there aren't brand new, okay? So you do private label. That means that you have a brand, you put a logo on the product and you're continuously driving more traffic to your website that has this custom product, right? You can also put this product in FBA, or you can put it in Amazon, you can put it in other different platforms, okay? So it's typically a combination of all the things that we talked about prior. A lot of people just stay, when they're at this stage on Shopify, or they'll just stay on Amazon, because again, you can kind of mix and match when you get to the private label side. But what you really have to have at this stage is capital and a proven offer. Do not go buy a bunch of inventory. Think that you can do a private little product without actual data. I've seen countless horror stories and people that have come to me and said that they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on inventory prior to even validating the offer with their specific brand. 
and it's a really, really complex issue when you have a bunch of inventory and you cannot move it. You have to be very, very creative. So what I recommend for people to go through that ascension ladder, really the experts and the pros, they start at the Shopify dropshipping level typically, and then they go into private label, okay? And this is where, again, the masters typically play. Now, if you want to know the next level, the PhDs, the elite, elite marketers, the elite companies, these guys become just brand. And this is typically where they have a custom product, okay? For top of funnel or awareness ads, okay? So you see Coca-Cola advertising polar bears. It has nothing to do with the actual product, right? Yeah, sure, you can say in some commercials the polar bears are drinking it, but regardless, same thing with the Budweiser and the horses, right? It's part of a brand. It's actually something that just grabs attention. And this is where these people play. And the reason they play here is because they have all the infrastructure already built for all of the things that we talked about prior. So they already have private label or a custom brand. They already have their web team. They already have their distribution teams when it comes to other methods in the case of beer or alcohol, right? But in regards to all these other channels, they already have their product established there. And that's how they're able to capture you know, online traffic and online uh, distribution because all they need to do at that point is just get awareness, okay? And even if we take a big, big, big step back, the way that these brands actually then make money, this is a brand. Now, these are all different ways for people to get started in e-commerce, and as they continue to grow, they look to diversify. Now, if you're at the brand level, you then just only look at e-commerce as one channel, and there's channels within it, okay? So if I go back down to the brand here, you have e-com, and there's different ways of e-com, right? You got advertising, okay? and then you have your marketplace listings. And these are options, they're not necessarily needed, but this is kind of how it looks, okay? Yeah, you have your ads, so then that's FB, Google, Snap, TikTok, etc. okay? And then you need content formats and structures around all that just for the advertising side. Then you have your marketplace, which you're probably even running some ads. So you know what, I'm gonna actually call this one here, not ads, I'm gonna call it Shopify and you use the other ones to actually drive the traffic to that storefront, okay? Then you have your marketplace, and this can be Amazon, this can be FB Shops, this can be Walmart, depending on your product, and there's some restrictions with certain companies and stuff like that, but that's how you then look at e-commerce as a whole. Each subset becomes its own channel. Then you typically have wholesale, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, but it is really an option where you sell it under uh, under market value or M under MSRP in order to give a distributor uh, some sort of discount um, in order to be able to push it harder, okay? And then the other channel then becomes retail, right? Traditional box office, retail, okay? And then in retail, then you have your targets, Right, you have your Walmarts, you have CVS, Walgreens, all that kind of stuff, right? So all this stuff then becomes its own game. So when you're getting exposure into e-commerce, typically where most people will fall, it's one of three categories when they first get started. They're doing this in the beginning, typically they don't have a lot of capital. They're doing this if they don't wanna worry about ads, they don't wanna worry about any of that stuff when it comes to social media content and things like that. They're just solely focused on SEO and listings, or they go here and they either pay someone to do it or they actually have someone to do it. The masters in e-commerce, higher level companies, they go here, they raise capital, and then these companies typically have a bunch of capital and they'll even still raise it depending on where they're at. Now, you can still grow organically through that process of running paid advertising because let's take a look at Casper, okay? Casper, as many of you guys know, was a DTC or still is a DTC. Uh, bedding company, okay? DTC beds, pillows, things like that. What they did, they spent ungodly amounts of money on social media. So FB, I believe they spent a good amount on TikTok. TikTok wasn't really as, as prominent back then, uh, but they did FB, IG, YT, YT, and Goof, okay? And you saw other companies like Purple and things like that. Just from their advertising, they reinvested 90% of their profits from the channel back into the actual platforms and it was to drive more and more top of funnel awareness but to do it in a way where they were making money okay so this acquisition strategy because they had raised the capital really was just based off of a 700 dollars order and a 500 dollars cost of goods okay so their cost per acquisition they had to uh, actually make about anywhere between 200 to 300 dollars per order in order for them to remain afloat with this method so then what they had done over a period of time with this d to c push 
they went into retail, okay? Because they realized that this was a never ending game at some levels of scale. So when you start doing multiple eight and then nine figures, it's not that it's not profitable, it's that it becomes more competitive when you're at that level of scale. And sure, you can throw more money at those campaigns, but the percentage of profit and the percentage of risk to reward may or may not be there. So what I mean by that is, let's say they were only having a 10% profit margin on social and they were continuously pushing social, they're probably gonna wanna diversify their profit center for their business into the things that we talked about earlier, right? Into retail and into other uh, areas of e-commerce and where people transact. So that's how these all intertwine. So there's not one way to do it, but there's typically facets that have to be proven out first and then you go to another channel as the business builds more infrastructure. So I hope that makes sense. And look, if you're an investor and you're someone that's looking to get into e-commerce or maybe you just start a business on your own, really what I would recommend is starting first on online arbitrage just because there's low capital expenditure and low risk in order for you to do so, right? So the order comes in first, cha-ching, and then you typically contact a supplier and this is supposed to be a box. We will see how well I did. Oh man, I jinxed myself. That's pretty That's pretty darn good, I'm not an artist. So the order then gets fulfilled and that's where you pay and then that gets shipped out to the customer that actually gave you the money in the first place, okay? So this is where you're able to make the profit on every single order that comes in. The next route I would go is FBA or FBM just because you're now making some money from online arbitrage, you can then rinse and repeat it and recycle it to pay for the inventory that you already saw that was working and originally with the online arbitrage strategy. If you wanna take it to the next level and you really wanna progress, that's where the Shopify world really starts to step in. And that's where, again, it takes money, not only to make money with inventory and things like that, but also with ads, content, budgets, and things like that. So I hope that gives you guys some perspective on how these are the foundational blocks of e-commerce and then how it progresses and continues to build. So if you're looking to get exposure into e-commerce, definitely factor in not only the costs associated with the model, but the actual strategies that make that model successful. Because if you go into, let's say an online arbitrage model, and you're thinking that you're gonna have to fork out the same money as FBM or FBA, well, you're probably either not aligned with the person trying to help you or you're just misinformed and that can actually lead to you losing money. And so that was the purpose of this video, making sure that you guys are aware of different facets and avenues of e-commerce that you can have exposure to, whether you're doing this on your own or whether you're hiring a team to do it. Now look, we actually do a lot of this stuff for our clients between online arbitrage and with Fit Shopify dropshipping. So if you wanna learn more, you can click the link in the description, but I hope that provides a lot of value for you. And if you did, click like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.